Hello. Hello. Uh, welcome to the daily, uh, right, uh, daily. Uh, welcome to the weekly writing group here on Book Art Media. Uh, I am Sebastien. Uh, this is Deb. This is Kevin. And uh, Sarah is in the chat. She uh, is caught in that huge mess down south. Um, but she said she was hoping to stop by later. So hopefully. Blessings, Sarah. Okay. Um, the stores are back open today, but only for a limited time. She's saying, listening in my car while hubby runs in and grabs items. We'll hop on as soon as I get home, assuming this doesn't take forever. Uh, I didn't get anything written last week, trying to be kind to myself. Next week's goal is 5K. Okay. Oh, gosh. Well, people are suffering right now. They really are. Have you guys been safe? Mm -hmm. Have you been, uh, I mean, Kevin, you're in, are, are you mm -hmm. in Texas? Yes, ma'am. I'm uh, near Austin. And oh, wow. Oh, we, wow. I, I got lucky. I'm, I'm out on a big ranch and uh, me and my closest neighbor about a half a mile away were the only people that we knew of everybody that we knew that didn't either lose power or lose water or both. Oh, wow. So did you did you get lucky, or are you set up to be self sufficient? Or I'm I'm self sufficient. I was a prepper before prepping was cool. <laughs> <laughs> or, or maybe you were a prepper before prepper Good prepping was right wing crazy. <laughs> well, no, I'm a half. Okay, prepper. there's I'm, that. I'm there we go. Not a fear based, not a fear based prepper. I'm a I do it just for a happy hobby and have something to do and. <laughs> Just like to have my 2,500 gallons of water, you know, in a tank, and <laughs> be able to produce well, for you. electricity and just just silly stuff like that. That's good, good if you're you. way out of the country. I love it. <laughs> yeah, we're not, we're not too bad. We're six miles away from Wimberley. Oh. Nice, nice. Um, Deb, I think your audio and video might be uh, slightly mismatched. Is that the case? Oh, if you maybe mind? so. I don't know what I oh, can no, do. Is it working now? If you, uh, but if you go out and you come back in, sometimes that fix it, and I will, I will put you right back in. <laughs> so okay. don't worry about that. Let me. I'll try that. I'll go out and come back in. All right. Okay, let me try good. that. Good. So right now it's just you and me. Sebastian, you, I think. When, you, go ahead. When did you live in San Marcos? Oh gosh. Uh, mid two thousands. Yeah, mid two thousands. I lived yeah. uh, just just south of San Marcos. It was like right on the edge, southern edge of, of San Marcos. So, um, it was it was interesting. <laughs> it's an interesting place for sure. I've been here since nineteen eighty six. But uh, oh wow, born in Austin, raised in Dallas, but been here since eighty six. So, I kind of like oh, it. Wow. Oh, well, why not? That is fantastic. And it's a beautiful place. Uh, it, is, it really is beautiful, um, especially around Austin because of the man, the tree mandate. So, yeah, no, I, it was, it was, it was beautiful. Um, how you doing, Deb? Can we, you seem to be okay. I'm good. Yeah. But you oh. know, you, yeah. Okay. It's still off, but anyway, but we can hear you and that's what matters. And we can see your beautiful face. Sounds like a clavichord. <laughs> oh, are you having troubles with the audio, Kevin? Does it sound wrong? It's. I hear an echo from you. It's repeating. From me. I can just hear a clavichord, and you're frozen, Sebastian. Am I? Oh dear. There you go. Okay. Now you're unfrozen. Okay, unfrozen's good. You sound good too. Okay, I think it's better. All right. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I can. Sync, can hear. Oh, great! Oh, great! Okay. Um. All right. No, I, the reason, the thing about Texas for me was, um, I loved the artistry being near Austin, and I loved, um, it, people were so friendly, and um, it, there were so many good things about it. It was just the, the it was just the drive-through liquor stores and the the gun racks <laughs> and the 
Um, yeah, it was just some of that stuff that was just, oh, okay. <laughs> so, but other than that, I mean, it was great. It was beautiful. So. Uh, it gets a little bit warm and I guess it matters how, how your uh, astro lines line up too. True. Whether, that is absolutely true. Where you are. Yes, absolutely. Uh, apparently, uh, astrologically, I would be best off in this little tiny triangle in New England <laughs> where I don't live. Other than that, it's kind of eh. <laughs> so I just like, yeah, my family's in Chicago. Let's just stay here. <laughs> but yes, there is something to astro cartography. All right, we're gonna add Allison to the stream here. Hello, Allison, how are you doing? There's Allison. Hello, how are you? In beautiful Hawaii. Good, how's Hawaii treating you? Yes, I'm in a place called Magic Island right now, so. Wow. Outside. I'm sorry, I missed Have you folks last week. I, I could not find the, um, the link for the life of me. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Um, I, uh, Sarah just Not your made fault. Sarah Everybody else. <laughs> oh, well, um, uh, Sarah is stuck in that whole mess in the South. And she uh, was just saying that she's, you know, they, they've been, power's been, iffy they just got some water pressure this first thing this morning it's they're not it's not good so she just ran out she's she just put in the uh chat she just said y'all <laughs> y'all i'm gonna cry in happiness burger king is open <laughs> <laughs> yes fantastic um michelle saying sebastian if you don't mind moving scenery in the background i'll jump in scenery background i don't there's no scenery per se she's probably talking about hers oh okay all right and deb's trying to come back in scenery there we go there's deb well we're just gonna go with what we have if anybody as long as we can hear each other and roughly see each other we're just gonna go with this it's gonna be great <laughs> so um i will go first uh if you don't mind um I, who I have good news and bad news. Um, uh, Deb, I think you're typing, perhaps. Hey, Deb, are you typing? Yes. Okay, I'm just okay. I can. I'm gonna mute you. Okay, so muting. In it. Okay, so anyway, um, the the. <laughs> <laughs> Mercury retrograde. I love it. Until uh, 729. Yep. Yep. Um, all right. Well, the bad news is that I, there's no way I can make my pre-order, my deadline. There's no way I can make my deadline. And it's gutting me. Absolutely gutting me. But, but this may turn out to be for the best because the good news is that I have, I'm having more fun writing. I'm getting more done doing something that's been in the back of my head for a long time. And that is uh, not just creating like an ebook, like an audiobook, but creating what, for the lack of a better term, I'd call a video book, which it's like an audiobook, but you can see the person performing it. And uh, then later that will allow me to put up other additional things like, you know, this is the floor plan of the inn, you know, kind of where, what floor we're on, you know, or other things. It can, so anyway, but the upshot is that it's, it's like just, it's no harder than creating an audio book in general. And so I've been kind of performing <laughs> uh, my writing and I'm really enjoying it. So you mean like you're, you're narrating it on, on camera? 
Yeah, it's it's just like it's like making an audio book, only instead of it only being audio, it's also video. Of you. Of me. Ah. So um can't go wrong there. Well, thank you. But I, I just I I uh, I think people really um I know a lot of people are really they like audiobooks. Um and they, they especially like when the author reads an audiobook. That's a that's a big thing. Uh, because the, the, it's the author who really knows what the inflection is, what the, you know, they, it, it's really in what they're, what the way they're writing it. And um, so I don't know, now that I'm saying it out loud to you guys, it sounds really arrogant. <laughs> no, it sounds fun. <laughs> but um, I'm having a lot of fun doing it. I'm just having Mercury retrograde technical issues, but I'm having fun and I'm, I'm getting writing done. So that's what I'm working on. And, um, I think this is going to work out well in the long run, but the print copy will come out also, right? Absolutely. I'll have the print copy. Um, in theory, I'll have an audio copy. I could publish separately and, um, also have stuff I can put on YouTube, which is helpful for promotion, but also, uh, allows some access to the, the stories that, um, maybe some people who, who really are struggling financially, who maybe couldn't afford the book, they can still watch, you know, so it's, it's being able to have it in these different media, um, mediums. Uh, so anyway, that's where my head is. So that's I'm actually cool. having a, having a good time, but boy, now that I'm telling you, it does make it sound like, oh yes, look at me. <laughs> no, no, it's, no, it sounds really cool. And you also get to upgrade your editing skills while you're at it because you can pop up this or that or whatever. You oh, you make, like you said. Well, I'm making changes as I go, as I, as I record, I realize, oh, that should be reversed. Oh, that should be here. Yeah. That should be, oh, I have, this thing's getting edited like out the wazoo. But anyway, so Natural that's what's going on. Things. I like it. Yeah. So that's that's where I am and that's what I am working on. Uh, Deb at the Beach is saying, uh, oh, I'm glad you're having fun, Sebastian. Oh, that's sweet. So um, Michelle seems to like it. We've lost Allison a little bit, at least her video. Yeah, it's Mercury lost Retrograde. <laughs> Yeah, bad things will happen. So you know, I, I noticed in the uh, you had commented in the chat, Kevin, that your writing uh, you've been getting lots of writing done this week. I have. I've been doing good. Uh, I, Twenty nine hundred and one words this week. I did. My goal was fifteen hundred, but being the the fact that I was snowed in and had little else to do other than try and stay warm, it worked out really well. And, oh, that's great. Uh, yeah, I've been enjoying it. My my first book, the, the, the new car smell has worn off of my first book. So, <laughs> you know, my numbers have gone down and but that's OK. I expected that. And I'm waiting for my George McFly moment right now. You know, when George got the paperbacks at the end of Back to the Future one, when he told Marty, see, Marty, you can do anything you want. If you put your mind to it, I'm waiting for UPS right now as we speak. Oh, <gasps> really? 30 minutes ago, but. Not so. Oh, not so. this is a great day. Oh, I'm so happy for you. Yeah. Oh, this is exciting. So we have to show us next week. But the new one's yeah. coming along well. It's uh, I'm a, almost a little over 20,000 words, I think now. And and uh, things are just rolling out like I expected. Yay. Yay. Oh, that makes me happy. That makes me happy. Excellent. And you oh, know I'm I so appreciate happy. all everybody's everybody's encouragement on the oh. on, on your channel and uh, the the book group. It's really helped oh. me organize and set goals and try new things. Oh, I I, I could not be happier. <laughs> I could not be happier. Uh, so, um, but anyway, let me let me have a quick look at the the chat here. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. I'm gonna guess Sarah is, is is at Burger King right now. Um, <laughs> bless. Um, let's see. Sarah saying good job, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Deb saying wow, Kevin. 
There you go. Uh, Aspie Third Eye is saying the transformation from written to spoken can reveal a whole lot of room for improvement and errors. <laughs> They're like slaps in the face. Yes, they are sometimes. <laughs> Not going to lie. Uh, let's see here. Oh, and Aspie Third Eye, congrats on the hard copies, Kevin. Woohoo! Thank you. you are, Deb's saying you are providing inspiration, which you are. So, and um, Allison's saying that the StreamYard wasn't working on her phone. Fair enough. So she's just watching on YouTube. Uh, Michelle saying, wow, good job, Kevin. So, Thank you. this is great. This is great. All right. And Deb is hoping that Sarah enjoys her. Uh, uh, Allison saying, congratulations, Kevin, too. So it's a shame we don't care, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Just all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know. Anyway, so this coming week, uh, do you have another kind of goal that you're setting? I'm going to stick with my 1500 so I can under-promise and over-deliver to myself. <laughs> hey, whatever works for you, because obviously you're having success and you are uh, – and since it's just the two of us, it seems like, uh, how have you always been writing? Have you um, have you been writing since you were, you know, small, or did it come later? Or no, I've just been writing since I started watching y'all in November. Uh, I wrote a little bit about some of my chainsaw carving stuff over the summer, but I didn't compile it all until. Uh, nano write mo and get that underway. No, it's a whole new artistic expression for me. I didn't. I'm so sorry. It didn't twig for me that 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 I thought you had been writing. So this this book you're about to get copies of, you started in November. Well, the, I actually I, I submitted it for uh, got it from the editor and submitted it to the uh, formatters then, but I had been. Uh, putting things together over the summer, summertime. But wow. I mean, it, was, it wasn't anything serious or just kind of an afterthought. And then I kind of just kicked in the afterburners when I saw how much fun all of you all were having. And so I wanted to get in on it. Oh, excellent. And you have succeeded. You have really succeeded. It's a fun I book. It's short. And the and it talks about my, well, it, it, it talks about my chainsaw carving career that I had that was, from tri trimming hedges to doing ice carvings as a chef and then working my way into being a wood carver. And then wow. uh, it, it was all happened real fast, but I produced several thousand wood carvings. And so that's why I have 80 uh, photos of my carvings in that little 117 page book. That wow. It's, 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 a, it's a fun read though, because I try to keep it entertaining and not just a dry autobiography thing and try to keep, uh, you know, keep a little humor mixed in with it. And if you, you know, you know me, I have to try to mix in humor. I apologize for my, my humor. No, 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 no. Humor is always welcome. But uh, yeah, no, that's, that's basically the story. And I've, I've been lucky enough to have a few reads and have a few sales. And so my numbers go up and down. I started off really good. Number one and new release in sculpture. And then all of a sudden, you know, at 120 overall, uh, 120,000 overall in the best sellers category. And then when it lost its new car smell, I shot up over a million. I went, wow, this is really a roller coaster deal. I didn't realize, but I'm learning as I go that every little sale helps your numbers. And, and um, it doesn't really matter to me. I just got it to give to friends and distribute. It wasn't to make any money or, you know, it wasn't to make a ton of money or anything like that. Oh wow, uh, that's great that you got up to one hundred twenty thousand. That's amazing in Amazon. So well done, well done. Uh, there, there is a definite. There, it is very much a a very steep. Uh, it it's a very much a long tail situation and a long tail uh, business to some extent, which is why you'll see a lot of fiction authors they're regularly putting out new books. Um, on a very strict schedule uh, because it isn't necessarily the big, you know, you do really well up here. It's 
a lot of long tail business that kind of keep you're out here somewhere. <laughs> you just live out here rather than than being in the high. Um, yeah, I mean, if you ever look at the the numbers that like the actual like top 100 and Amazon are pulling down, it's like crazy. Wow, like lottery winning kind of money, right? And, yeah, no, uh, situation. I'm figuring so, that out. Yeah, but 120,000 that is really, really good. That was when it was brand new and first out, obviously. When they, when they, doesn't matter. Hey, a new release. No, but that's good. And that, that is, um, that's really good. And it doesn't matter, you know, was, you got there honestly. And that's all that matters. You got there and you created something really good. You got bestseller in a category. This is that it's definitely something to be proud of. So well, thank you. I appreciate it. Do you do you think you're, it'll be part of a series or do you think it'll be something more short? Like, like, oh, no, do you, the, do you, the, are you going to keep going? No, the first book is totally different than the one I'm working on now. The one I'm working on now covers the last 20 years in my spare time. I've been, I built a self-sufficient off-grid uh, homestead in West Texas on a little 50-acre ranch. And I've learned how to create my own electricity, be self-reliant, my own food, my own shelter, my own everything. And so that I'm, I'm putting that into a book for people who want to, who are thinking about doing that. And since I've already have 20 years of experience at it, I figure why not just, just tell and, everyone. Exactly. And I mean, I know I've read, and, and generally it isn't just if somebody wants to know about things like that, uh, you know, like I know if, you know, there, when I was reading some books on, you know, a kind of a Walden pond kind of going out and, and, having a little cabin and living in the woods kind of thing. You don't just read one book, you read, you, you like one, so you read a whole bunch of them. Exactly, that's what I did when I was building my place. I read a lot of books about homesteading and this and that and the other, and found little nuggets here and there that I could use. And some worked for my area and some didn't work for my area, but it was all been a trial and error kind of thing, but a fun hobby a spare time deal. It didn't let it interfere with my life or uh, raising my son or anything like that. Oh, that's very cool. Now that he's uh, 27 going on 28 years old and he's been long gone for a long time. I can now uh, recount everything and I have a fairly good memory. So that helps. Oh, that's fantastic. Because the reason I brought that up is because um, this idea that you could really, you know, people, there's, there's a real market for people who wanting to not only want to know how to do things like that, but the, the personal stories of living through it. And uh, it's really humanizing it um, makes, yeah, I can absolutely see that selling and, and being successful. So, uh, and what are you thinking long term with your writing? I'm sorry, you broke up. Oh, I'm sorry. What are you thinking long term with your writing? I I love what you're doing. I'm just wondering if if you're are, are you going to keep I, I I'm sorry, Sebastian. It, it sound, you oh. sound like a clavichord there. I didn't understand a word. Oh, sorry. Is my internet going funny? Um something something's happening. Let me check my internet. You're, you're frozen. There you go. Now you've unfrozen and refrozen. Oh, no. Um, there you go. Now you're back on. Okay. Sorry. It says I'm connected. Okay. Um, all right. I, but what I was saying was, uh, I was wondering if you have, I, I love what you're doing. Uh, I'm just wondering, do you, are you, what are you thinking long-term with your writing or, or are you just taking it day by day? Well, I'm going to finish this one and I'm going to try to do the best I can on this one. I want to dip my toe in the short stories and the nonfiction next. I think oh, I have cool. the capability to do it. I have the imagination to do it. It's just a matter of, you know, finishing one project and 
but I'm kind of starting like the, the suggestion you had about keep two or three projects going. So when you get stuck on one, you can move over to another. Okay. And so that's what I'm, that's where I'm aiming next is to start forming the idea of the, either the first short story or the first nonfiction work that I want to do. Um, but yeah, I plan on going forward with it because it's fun to me. And it's, it, it's a lot easier than being on the dumb end of a chainsaw. <laughs> That was good. That was good. Okay. Uh, oh, all right. Because um, uh, I was just, I was thinking that, um, I don't know that you'd ever want to go in this direction, but I know that one of, years ago, my father had a, um, a paperback on his bookshelf, and I guess he hadn't gotten around to reading it. And I was like, hey, do you mind if I read this? And he was like, go ahead. So I read it, and then he was interested, he read it. And so we were, my father and I were talking about this novel called Lucifer's Hammer. Oh, wow. And it was about uh, a an, an asteroid hitting the Earth in modern day. But it was all of these different ways that different people found to survive and found to clever things that they did. Um, and I'm just wondering if, if uh, I'm not saying that's something you'd want to want to write, but I was just thinking if you ever decided to, to go that route, uh, to go into the route of, of fiction, there's, you could certainly turn that into to some fascinating stuff, but you do you. I'm not trying to tell you which way to go. I just wanted. To, I just thought I'd mention it because uh, there's it, it. It you have you have one heck of a skill set that you can share. Uh, it's it's kind of like um, oh goodness, what is his name? There is a very popular. It's 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 not as hard science fiction, uh, meaning that it's actually science based, as in real like. Well, that's science based. Like, let me sit down and explain to you artificial technology or, you know, what have you, or uh, whatever technical stuff. But it's taking real technology, real how things are, like the Martian, you know, okay. he got his, he got those mm -hmm. potatoes growing, and that whole book is based on real science on like what you could actually do to survive in that situation. So there's a huge market for fiction that includes the, the like, this would actually work. Like people can learn in an entertaining way. Does that make sense? Sure it does. I go way back to the Omega Man and to, you know, the, the postman and, and and all the star trek and, and every you know all of that mad max i know know all of the the kind of technologies that they used to use then and incorporated into my own place for that matter you know where i can but no that's applicable i can see see your point and uh i love uh automotive racing and my son he works for a german uh uh, endurance racing team when they come to the United States. He's a physiotherapist for them. He does physiotherapy. But I was thinking when I was a kid, I used to read books of, uh, by William Campbell Golf, this real cheesy author that would do uh, books about automotive uh, racing and tragedy and Le Mans and crashing and this, that, and the other. And I'd, I'd like to look into some of that too, because I do enjoy motorsports and the technology and all the drama that goes behind all the teams and everything. Oh yeah. Oh, there's, there's, uh, there really is a, a, there where, where knowledge of real things and f good, well-constructed fiction come together. There are a whole lot of readers. <laughs> there are a whole lot of readers who are just, just like, please, I want to read more of your stuff. Yeah. So, Oh, this sounds fantastic. I'm so glad. I th thank you for sharing that. I'm glad we had, uh, it's, maybe it's a, it's a blessing that, uh, because we, I, we got to hear more about what you're doing there. They can get a little, little hectic or busy. So uh, thank you so much for sharing that, Kevin. Appreciate it. You, uh, you're welcome so much. Thank you. I've just, like I said, I've just gotten my beak wet. So we'll see what, we'll, stay tuned because, uh, 
It's uh, it's not over till it's over. Very cool. Well, you are an inspiration to all of us. So that, that we'll just goes keep both going. ways. I I'm hoping that. Um, um, I'm hoping actually I might even start putting some of my uh, the, the videos I'm making, just putting them up uh, on the channel to see what people think, uh, put up, you know, a chapter at a time kind of thing and just see if people enjoy it as I'm working my way through what I'm trying to create. But uh, yeah, we just just keep on just keep on creating. That should be kind of our motto. Just yeah. keep on creating. No, I think they would like it. And I read the blurb on end time. It sounds very interesting. Seems to me kind of has some time travel issue, you know, uh, uh, oh, yeah. pieces to it. And I'm way off into time travel and real time travel, even not just fake time travel. I, I really do believe in it that you can transport yourself to other places and times because we're all one and time is running is nonlinear yet is running linear to our individual experience. Yeah. But uh, and I've had some nice time travel experiences myself, and I'll be interested oh, well. in seeing that book when it comes out. I'll, I'll get it and, and read it. Oh, well, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, there, there's a, a kind of running joke in it. Uh, actually, it is. It's a recurring joke that um, basically when the when it loops, she like drops through the floor. And it's only after so many loops that she it's, she started starts recognizing what's happening to her as she goes, uh, because she drops to the floor, and then she just sees like deep space, at first like an instant, and then it's just bright, like orange yellow, and then she falls back through the roof of the bedroom onto the bed. And bounces and usually, you know, lands to various comedic effect. And basically what she eventually <laughs> figures out is it's um, because you can't move through time without moving through space. And the whole solar system, if you if you take the sun at the center and, and you know, our planet on that disk, um, the whole solar system is actually moving up as it's spinning. Everything's spinning but it's the whole system's actually just through space. We're moving upward. It's, it's corkscrewing through space and the solar system, the whole thing. And so when she goes, when it's going, it, it has to do with basically she's in deep space and then she's, it, she, they, it like tries to correct. She ends up like surrounded by magma and then she's back where she was. And um, so there's jokes about that later where it's just like, Oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, and there's on the cover, there's it, there's a splash of like yellow, orange yellow on the side. And it isn't, it, maybe some people never figure it out, but that's actually a reference to the magma. Oh. Um, so there's, you know, there's the in, there's their clocks, and then there's this splash of color and that's what that is. But, um, yeah, there's a there's some running jokes about stuff like that. So, being able to throw some of that, just a hint of science in there, uh, can be a lot of fun. How many pages are you are you are you shooting for? I don't think in pages. Or how many uh, words? I'm sorry. How many words? Oh, uh, about eighty. Oh. Eighty thousand. Yep. Yeah. And about half. I, I know. I know. I'm. I know. I'm more than halfway through. And um, I have I have a lot of things outlined out, or I have a simple kind of screenplay version outlined. So like I've got the I know I know the the storyline. I have to flesh things out, and that's what I'm working on. So, well, the reason okay. I ask is I just looked up yesterday on on the Google machine what what are uh, common word counts for each uh, category of a book. And I found it very interesting that it, I, it shows you how little I know from no. short stories to all the way up to Harry Potter's and to series and the things like that, which are mind blowingly long, but uh, nonfiction and fiction, totally different. And there's no really hard set rule 
but if you're going to get that audience that you want to have, you got to be in that sweet spot. It sounds like you kind of are at 80 there. Um, Thank you. With what you're doing. Yeah, I, I'm a, I'm a purist when it comes to word counts. <laughs> so to me, um, you know, if it's less than 20,000, it's a short story. If it's, you know, it has to be up to about, up to about 40, 45, it's a novella. Above that, you've got novel, but a real novel number, you've got category length at 60,000 and, and novels are, are in general about 80. And then you get certain uh, the subgenres, or yeah, you get certain genres, I should say, like fantasy, which will often be over a hundred thousand. So, yeah, I know what you're talking about there. <laughs> it, it's a it's a fun learning experience, though. I'll give it that. I've spent way too long studying all this stuff, so. Um, I'm gonna have a quick look here at the chat because we've got some great chat going in here. Let's see here. Um, so I'm going to scroll back here a little bit. Uh, Michelle is having an epiphany about self-publishing through Amazon, which I hadn't considered previously. Uh, so even though I'm apprehensive because I don't know what I'm doing, here goes. Excellent. Excellent, Michelle. Let her rip. Let her rip. Yeah, exactly. And whatever, whatever we can do to help. Uh, Sarah is saying, Michelle, welcome to the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Deb saying, Kevin, what an interesting character you are because you've had so many great experiences. It's just the tip of the iceberg. I wouldn't bore you with half of it. Uh, um, Michelle, LOL, wish me luck, Sarah. I'm sure I'll have plenty of questions along the way. No worries. Michelle saying, Kevin, that sounds fascinating what you were saying. Uh, Deb at the beach is saying, Kevin, that self-sufficiency book will be the bestseller after this whole frozen Texas event. It's not going to hurt. Yeah, that will not hurt at all. Um, good for you, Kevin. That'll be a bestseller, says Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. Okay, also, Sarah is pointing out, she's saying, also, next storm, I'm heading to Kevin's. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of room, 170 acres here and 50 elsewhere, so. Yeah. And she, she was laughing, so. Um, Michelle, I still can't get out of my own driveway. Oh, goodness. And Sarah's saying, if I didn't have a Suburban, I'd be stuck too. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Deb is saying we're talking about, um, she mentioned, oh, yeah, and Dick Francis and horse racing was another, having knowledge of, of a topic like you do, how it can really um, go in, really inform the writing. Uh, Aspie Third Eye is saying a lifetime of other people's experiences become the bits of experience of this or that character. Absolutely, it makes, yeah. It makes characters realistically useful. Absolutely, well put. Um, Deb at the beach would oh, would love to see those videos. Oh, that's sweet. Um, so would Michelle. Uh, Allison is asking Sebastian, have you seen the Netflix movie about the Lethal Hotel? I have not. Mm -hmm. And Deb is saying, hmm, magma is magnetic. I'll have to work that in. Thank you, Deb. <laughs> I'll have to throw a work in something there. Uh, and then Michelle is saying Ascension. I think that's the name of a book or a series. I, I can't remember exactly. I think they even made it into a movie. Oh, okay. Cool. I think. All right. Well, all right. Well, that seems to be, if unless somebody would like to, to throw in something else, um, that might do it for us this week. But uh, I want to throw in something. I know I've been please. Uh, hogging all the time. No. Nope. just wanted to say how sweet it was of you on your channel to donate to other people that are in need. And oh. your, your kindness is, is, is very touching. It really is. And I'm not just saying it to say it. I say it because I mean it. And I know thousands of other people are just too chicken to say it to your face, but I'm not. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. We are, we are not alone. We are the, we, we are connected. We are from the same place. We return to the same place. We are, we are down here together 
And uh, I, but thank you. That's very kind of you to say. Appreciate that. You're so welcome. Yeah. All right, everybody. Just express yourself. Be creative. Uh, be like Kevin, because <laughs> Kevin's got it going on. Kevin has got it going on right there. So hang in there. And uh, I hope that I hope that everybody can make it through the week safely and um, just hang in there, everybody. All right. We'll get through it. We'll, we'll, and we'll meet up again next week. I hope that everybody will be available. But you, you just just as long as you're safe, that's what really matters. All right. So hang in there and uh, express yourself where you can. All right. So take Thanks, care. Everybody. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. All right. And see you next week.